So good afternoon and welcome to this um, ACE Talent Retention Scheme webinar this afternoon. Uh, my name's Hannah Vickers, I'm the Chief Exec of the Association for Consultancy and Engineering. Um, so one of our members, you're very welcome to be here. If you're not, you're equally as welcome. Um, this is going to be an open webinar and it's really because uh, it's something so important that we want to promote it across the industry. So the purpose of today's webinar is to talk you through the Construction Talent Retention Scheme and this particular webinar is aimed at individuals. So this is all about what it could do for you as an individual and how you access it. Now, I'm really pleased to say I've got a couple of fantastic um, speakers lined up. Um, and the agenda for today, we've got first up will be Stuart Young. Um, so I'll introduce you properly in a minute, but he is our colleague from Bayes. He works in the construction unit uh, and he has been instrumental in designing and developing and securing the government funding that sits behind the construction talent retention scheme. And then the second thing we're going to come on to today is a practical presentation of how to use the portal. And again, I'm really pleased to say we've got Chris Jarman uh, from Talent Retention Solutions, which is the uh, not-for-profit company that sits behind the talent retention portal itself, who've been doing the design and the development for us. So we're actually going to show you the portal, walk you through how you can use it. And then we've got time at the end for Q&A as well. So um, you should be able to see on your screen in the box on the right, uh, there is an area for Q&A and chat. So if you have questions, at any point during the agenda, any time our speakers are going through their presentations, uh, then please do just pop those into the chat function on the right. A couple of um, housekeeping points, just in case you haven't dialed into one of these before, and if you have, you would have heard me say this already. Uh, but the first is to say that this webinar is probably best experienced through headphones. So if you've got headphones, plug them in, um, you will enjoy it even more, but needs to say, I'm sure it'll be fine if you don't. Uh, secondly, that I've mentioned already the questions. I will pick those up. We've got plenty of time today, so hopefully we'll be able to get through them all. If we don't, I will come back to you or we will be able to come back to you with answers. With that, it does help if you put your name or your company in it just so we can make sure we're answering the right person. Um, but yeah, please do pop that in. Um, but equally, when we get to the end, I will be sort of fielding Q&A to either Chris or Stuart or myself, if that's um, applicable, just to help you get a sort of full um, understanding, full interactive experience really from the webinar today. And the last thing to say is that we're going to record this and it's going to be free and open for anybody to use. So if you miss anything today or you want to share it with colleagues, friends, uh, anyone you think may benefit from, from having access to this, uh, then please do and we will send you a link um, to your email address that you registered with that has the uh, the full link on it, as well as some um, some of the materials that we're going to talk talk to you about and refer to refer to during the webinar today. So don't worry, you will get all the information. You don't need to be scrabbling to write down web links or things like that as we as we go through. Okay, so I think on that basis and recognising we want to leave as much time as possible for Q and A, I think I'd like to introduce our first speaker. So as I've mentioned already, Stuart Young is is part of BASE, so he works in the construction unit, he's head of stakeholder management and has had a very busy few months working away on the construction talent retention scheme. So he sort of co-developed it, wrote the business case, secured the funding, and there is about 1.2 million pounds worth of government funding behind this, which is why it will be free to use uh, for, you know, for us as an industry. So a huge achievement for Stuart and very grateful to him for getting this across the line. Uh, and he's now going to, he's, going to give us a bit of an overview about the, the sort of purpose and what Bayes is hoping to achieve by putting this in place for the industry. So Stuart, over to you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Hannah, and thank, hope you're well and hope you can hear me. Um, thanks for those kind words. I think it would be fair to say this was um, a real team effort. I'd just particularly like to thank Hannah for all the kind of input and support she gave to me the last kind of few months. That was definitely a real joint team effort. Um, apologies, you can hear some noise. I've got a bit of building work going on in the background here, so hopefully that won't disturb us too much. So if we could just go on to the next slide, please. Next slide, please. So this really just talks about um, sets where the talent retention scheme sits in the overall structure of the Construction Leadership Council. So the Construction Leadership Council has a series of work streams, one of which is around skills. So this particular scheme sits under the skills work stream, which is an overall chaired by Mark Reynolds, the CEO of MACE. And we've now got a um, kind of a skills working group, which has been set up as a working level, which is chaired by Sarah Bill, 
CEO of the CITB. And you'll see there's a series of kind of work programs that sit underneath that, including the talent retention scheme. So if we move on to the next slide, please. So really just to talk you through a bit more about the construction talent retention scheme and how this came about. So you, most of you will be aware that it was kind of mentioned uh, in the Chancellor's recent economic announcement, and it noted there about the establishment of the talent retention scheme. And then it was formally launched by Nadeem Zahawi on the 24th of July. And basically we had about 150 people on that call. Where the actual proposal originated from was the Construction Leadership Council COVID Task Force. So that's a group of around 15 CEOs from the key trade associations across the sector, including HANA. So basically that, that kind of um, group recommended that a construction talent retention scheme was to be established. And so I've got two shit two puppies about to start barking as well. Here. It's all going off here. Um, so basically, yes, yeah, so that talent retention scheme was to be established to retain and redeploy staff in a centrally coordinated approach. It was generally felt at present that the recruitment industry was quite short term, quite fragmented, and it needed a centrally coordinated approach. PLC also did a survey which noted around 690,000 jobs were at risk in the sector by the end of the calendar year. And unfortunately, you've all seen of many redundancies already been announced and seemingly happening now on a daily basis. And we also know that through the last recession, over 500,000 people left the industry. So before COVID came along, we had a mass skills issue in the industry, and that is only going to become more acute as a result of EU exit and the continuing effects of post-COVID for companies across the country. So really, um, we've got a mass skills shortage, and this scheme helps to stop that. So it's going to have two aims. It's going to facilitate talent matching and employee loans on a temporary basis between businesses. And it's also going to support redeployment of relevant personnel from adjacent sectors where there are overlapping competencies. So, for example, aviation, aerospace, manufacturing, so on and so forth. Really kind of um, making a link and providing those individuals with access to broader job opportunities. The, the scheme is part of the government's broader narrative in terms of protecting SMEs, protecting companies and protecting local communities. Very much recognised that construction is predominantly made up of SMEs, employing around just over 3 million people and contributing around 8% of GDP. So there's a real recognition that it's very much an employer in local communities and there is a considerable risk in the local community of people losing their jobs. Also worth highlighting that very strong political support and interest in the construction space. And that is coming from the Prime Minister down, which judge you by my inbox traffic with number 10 and HMT commissions that is continued since the launch of the scheme. So real kind of interest um, in the programme and the subject more generally. The key point to say as well is that the scheme will be free to use for everyone in the industry until at least April of next year. So regardless of whether you're an SME, a large company, blue collar, white collar, whatever you might be, it's free for everyone to use. Post April next year, the scheme will be continued to be free for SMEs. The industry will take over the long term funding model and we're looking at that at present about how that might work um, going forwards. So if we just move on to the next slide, please. So this is basically setting out the existing trade associations who are currently on the Construction Leadership Council Task Force, including organisations such as ACE this morning. So I really wanted to kind of thank those organisations for their support. And obviously most of them, if not all of them now, have now put up vacancies or for their members have put up vacancies onto the portal, which at present we have well over 500 companies already signed up on this. But Chris may, may want to talk about the figures a bit later. He may be more up to speed on those. Um, if we go on to the next slide, please. So just reflecting the timeline here. So the Chancellor made the announcement of the scheme on the 8th of July. The portal was launched on the 24th of July, and we're now, as Hannah mentioned earlier, we're now involved in kind of an ongoing promotional activity to really kind of round the message home that the scheme is there and to kind of um, increase its offer and awareness. And I'll touch on that in a few minutes. So we just move on to the next slide, please. 
So the scheme's now been announced. The next steps, we've now got this bi-weekly meetings of the TRS business user group, which includes myself, Chris, you're going to hear from shortly, and Hannah. And that's tracking kind of sign up to the program, the communications about where we can go wider, deeper, and any sort of key areas we might be missing in terms of um, geographic locations and particular sectors within the construction sector. And that group also looks about managing any ongoing risks and issues we need to be aware of. At present, we are agreeing a membership for a steering group, which will shape the scheme's future development of the programme and looking at things like kind of um, how we might go wider and looking at the funding model going forwards. And once we have agreed the membership of that group, we will also be developing and agreeing a terms of reference and a project plan. There is a considerable ongoing engagement with key government departments to widen out the often and awareness of the scheme. So they, this includes, but not limited to, DFE partners, DWP, DFT, IPA, CLG, growth hubs, local enterprise networks, and mayoral combined authority. So a real kind of um, really widening the offer, to, so to speak, and look at opportunities to work with other sectors, for example, including aviation more generally as we move forward. The next slide, please. So as part of that group's work, we're gonna be developing a medium-term communication strategy which will include a ministerial visit by Nadine to one of the relevant projects, um, widened engagement with industry, and also reaching out to the educational establishment, such as the Institute for Practice, to work out how we can widen this um, going forwards. And we're also continuing to grow the scheme with targeted comms at specific companies. So, for example, companies who are currently making redundancies, we are kind of um, keeping a list of those and kind of getting in touch with those to see how the TRS can offer support to those particular companies and where they may have already gone into administration, making contact with the relevant administrators to offer help. Um, and you'll be aware of the companies who have recently made such redundancies and we're having conversations with them across the group. So just move on to the next slide, please. So this is a series of companies that have become early adopters and supporters of the program. So what that means really is that those companies have provide, been provided with intensive one-to-one -one support through Chris and his team, and just been provided with support to upload their vacancies onto the portal. And we're very grateful for Chris's help together with those company support. If we move on, please. So that marks the end of my presentation. Um, and I'll probably hand back to Hannah now. I've managed to get fit that the dog's going completely crazy. Thank you. <laughs> Thank Come you, on. Stuart. Ably assisted, ably assisted there by your dogs. And I think that's absolutely fine because it's all part of working from home. Um, so no, that's great. That was a really good overview. Um, just, just some of the key points, I think it'd be really helpful to highlight to our audience, as you say, that this is, you know, this is for companies to be putting vacancies up and companies to be searching candidates but equally, it's for, you know, we're trying to really promote this to individuals to get themselves on there. So whether you're a business or an individual, actually, you can register. And Chris will show us show us that in a second. Um, the links to the public sector jobs is quite interesting and the public sector bodies. So you know, this is as much as it's trying to redeploy people within the industry between businesses. You're doing a lot of work trying to get the departments and the arm's length bodies involved because equally it's important for them to be putting their vacancies on and encouraging their supply chain um, because as you say it's a way for them to be um, you know make, taking advantage of it and hopefully retaining this talent in the industry you know redeploying people if you like if they are at risk or have been made redundant so i think that's really positive actually um and then the last point was just you, you touched on it at the very end, but the development over the medium term. So we know, you know, certainly for the next few months, this is going to be really focused on having, you know, sort of practical support to individuals and to employers. But as it goes forward, there's huge potential in this, isn't there, to pick up with this educational yeah. establishments. And again, you're having those sorts of conversations already, which is really positive that actually this is a way perhaps to, you know, attract people into the industry and make it really accessible for people wanting to come in, which I know has been a sort of perennial problem for us as, a, as the construction industry. So 
Fantastic. Thank you very much, Stuart. What we will um, do is I'll just remind everybody, you can put your, your questions in the chat function um, if there are things on this that you'd like to ask Stuart. And equally, when I uh, bring Chris in in a second, he's going to give us a practical demonstration. So again, please ask, doesn't matter how technical, how detailed, if you want to ask your questions, I'm sure Chris will be able to answer them. Um, set you a high bar there, Chris. Um, okay, so what we're going to have now is a bit of a look around the portal. And as I say, this is completely free. There is no charge. Uh, um, Chris, I think if you want to give us an overview of the figures, and without wanting to steal your thunder and recognising we're talking to individuals today, um, but you currently have more jobs than you have people uh, registered. Is that is that right? Yes, as of five o'clock. Thanks, Hannah, and thank you, Stuart, as well. And um, just picking up on what Hannah said, as of five o'clock last night, there were 323 live vacancies on the system. Um, many of those representing multiple positions. So the number of actual positions available is, is something in excess of that. Uh, and this is growing and changing every day. So uh, we are still in very early days, but the whole site is, seems to be being very well received and we are encouraging people to uh, really uh, get involved for individuals to, to register and be seen by participating companies and for participating companies to put their vacancies on the system. Um, as, ha as both Hannah and Stuart have said, there is huge uh, potential and uh, plans for expanding and developing this uh, as we go along. So um, please uh, get involved. And if you either a company with individuals who may be at risk or um, uh, possibly even already have been made redundant to encourage them to register and be seen. And similarly for individuals just interested uh, within the sector, please register on the system. Um, what we've done, and I'll, I'll just take you into the system now, is create a, a portal into a system which um, really has its origins in uh, through development work with Rolls-Royce a number of years ago in the post 9-11 period where there was a, a hemorrhaging of skills from aerospace. We were trying to help support um, a framework for retaining skills and keeping people visible within their own sector and across their sector, um, of uh, visible to employers and to the opportunities those employers had and where that isn't possible for them to be able to also um, have sight of opportunities outside of the sector as well. And uh, in these uncertain times, um, being on the system is going to be a very important part of being able to be seen and to be contacted by employing um, organizations. Um, the system works in a way where it, it simply uh, requires you to register your details. It's a fairly straightforward registration, which I'll go through with you. And by doing that, you are able to both apply for any vacancies on the system and also, if you wish, be visible to all the participating companies who um, are on the system and can contact you through it. Um, so it's a two-way process. As Stuart said, it's not just a job board. It, it's a platform in which companies have direct access to you. And um, we don't act as an intermediary at all in this. There is no... Um, in between stage, companies can speak to you directly, you can apply for their vacancies directly, and um, it enables a much more effective connection um, between um, both sides. So the portal is um, located at um, clc-talentretention.co.uk. Um, it was also originally set up as um, uh, trs-system.co.uk forward slash construction. And uh, once you come into the system, the screen you see now is the, the home page, the landing page. And it shows on the right hand side here a number of the um, major companies, major uh, partners in the process. And I'll show you a little bit more about that later. To register, simply come up to the top right-hand corner and click on register. And it takes you into um, candidate and organization registration. Obviously, companies 
register under organization. As individuals, please click on the candidate registration and come into the very first stage of this. What we initially ask for is just basic account details. It's your name, um, first name, last name, email address, password, and a contact number. That's the very basic um, information we need to get you into the system. Um, there are some additional questions on the screen. It's a two-stage registration. What we do is capture some additional uh, initial information from you, and we then will can ask you to confirm your email, and you'll receive, having completed this screen, you will receive a, an automated email thanking you for registering and just asking you to click a link which will confirm your email. And then you will be invited to complete the second stage, which talks about your job preferences and where you can attach your CV. But let me just go through the, the final fields here. Under employment information, we um, it's very helpful to know where you've come from in the organization. And having sight of the impact that COVID has had on the construction sector, knowing where people have come from, where they end up going, is a very important part of being able to plan um, future activities and things. So what we ask is if you could indicate the company, your last employer or your current company, if you're at risk. If your company is already registered, it will pick it up automatically. So there are two fields here. One is in essence, if, if your company isn't registered, you can just key it in afresh. But we ask you to start here and just key in um, the name of your company. For example, if I put in Winchester, it'll bring up Winchester Consulting and I can simply click on that. Because the company is already registered, you can identify this as being your company. Uh, it doesn't then ask you to complete the same information about the company. Uh, it will just um, pick up the fact you're linked to it. Um, if it doesn't show up on that list, please just key in afresh your, your company name over here, whatever it is, and that would be perfect. The next question here is your current employment status. A lot of these questions are simply from drop-down options. We just ask you to indicate um, what particular status you're at at the moment. And then what we call current employment type, which is really, if you're a normal employee and have been for many years and experienced what we call an experienced candidate, just click on experienced. If you're a, an apprentice or a graduate actually on a program in a company, we just ask you to indicate um, which stage you're at, what kind of um, program you're on. And then we, um, within the construction sector, it's also very helpful to know exactly what general area of activity or what we call job family you are associated with. And each of these have then um, an additional listing underneath them. So, for example, if you click on admin and support, it'll bring up a, a drop down of all the admin and support um, areas. So you give it in effect a general category and then a more detailed, what we call a, a, a subgroup level for the job family. Um, and that will change, of course, if you, uh, particularly if you're an apprentice or something, you would probably put trade and manual groups and the category is, is much longer in that area and should cover, we hope you, we've covered everything uh, that may come up um, and that defines where you've been working. So that's, Fairly straightforward, just clicking on the drop down and selecting the option. Um, as part of the overall engagement at the moment, it is very helpful for not only the sector, but um, government to know where people have come from and uh, general information. And we ask this, um, uh, it, it's, it's optional, but we're very, we encourage you very much to um, provide this information. Just three general questions, your gender, date of birth and an indication of where you live, which can be done just by putting in a postcode. Um, the final stage is simply confirming the terms, conditions, the privacy and data protection policy that you have understood and, uh, and I am not a robot to, uh, and then the final click on register. That will generate the email I mentioned earlier, just asking you to confirm uh, your email address. So that's the 
very first stage for individual registration. Fairly straightforward series of, of um, fields we ask you to complete. What I'm now going to do is just, I'm going to log in to show you this next stage. So, uh, as I said, you will receive an email confirming, asking you to confirm your uh, email uh, on a link, click, and then it will invite you back into the system and provide you um, with a route whereby you can come straight in. And what you will then see, I've just come in as an administrator, so you won't see the screen, but the screen you will see, um, just bear with me one moment, as an individual, when you come in, it will look something like this. You have a dashboard, a top level dashboard, um, single screen, which just reminds you of what you were last doing, or when you come in afresh, it will it will be empty, but um, it's a very useful check as you come into the system each time. It reminds you if you haven't uploaded your CV, for example. We have a facility, you can turn yourself, your visibility on and off needed. And the reason we do this is actually because often when people see a vacancy or are keen to apply for a job, um, they may not have completed their CV details and may not be ready to sort of publish themselves on the system but nonetheless you are able to apply for the vacancy if you've done that first stage of the registration um, but we really encourage you to be seen and be contacted by participating companies to also complete the second stage which i'll talk you through in just a second um, it also just very briefly shows uh, expressions of interest that have been made in you so if any companies express interest in you you can keep a log and a track of what has happened it shows you vacancies you might be interested in against your stated preferences and it shows you the last vacancies you've looked at on the system as well but let me just complete this second stage so you recall that first stage of the um, registration you completed what were just known as general account details and what we what you then have to do is complete the second stage which is what we call personal profile and it's just additional information about you qualifications that you have um, and we ask you to select from a uh, drop down list um, indicating at least your most recent and highest qualifications but it's multiple select so you can include any that are relevant in there um, any university if you are at university it gives you a drop down list to select from professional membership any additional language um, fluency you have and then the section called job search preferences now the reason we ask these questions is so that we can position you to be found by inquiring companies so if we ask you to, if a company is searching for a design engineer, and you've put your job title as design engineer, of course it will show you up in their searches. So we, we ask a number of questions here. Some of them are free text, some of them are from drop-down menus. Um, your, the ideal, your preferred job title, um, type of employment you're seeking, is it full-time or part-time or contract work? Um, the industrial sectors um, above and beyond your own that you would be interested in uh, being considered under. So there will, there's a, a list of other um, business sectors that you can select and indicate interest from. Your preferred work location. Now this is done on a country, region and county basis. So you can say, I, you know, I'd be happy to work anywhere internationally anywhere in the UK or just England, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland, or literally from a particular region or in a particular county um, in that region. So if you wanted, for example, to work in the anywhere in the East Midlands, you could just click East Midlands. If you just wanted to work in, for example, Nottinghamshire and Derbyshire, you could select those counties. Um, we ask a question, uh, would you consider relocation? Just a general indication. Um, another one for many of the uh, companies 
who were involved in, in requiring security clearance, just a general indication if you have any kind of security clearance. It doesn't ask you what level, just whether you have or you haven't got it. Um, are you eligible to work in the UK? And uh, also within the construction sector, which general area or areas are you interested in being considered under or searched for? And then towards the end here, this please indicate um, your availability. When will you be available? It may be that you've been given notification that you uh, will be available from the end of September or October. So you can simply put in that date um, or it will just pick up. It'll default to today is the date you register if you don't put anything in. Um, and then we come to the section where you can add information um, uh, provide a, a summary of who you are, a profile indicating your general key skills and experience, a quick two or three sentences of uh, who you are, um, any additional qualifications or, or more detail about relevant qualifications that may not have been selected from the drop down or available to you in the previous drop down, and then um, the ability to upload your, your CV. Uh, this can be uploaded either in Word format or in a PDF format. So uh, it's helpful to have your profile in place, all the above questions completed, and then people can see more detail as they click on your, your CV. And the system, as I mentioned, defaults to not making you visible to um, inquiring companies unless you choose to activate your profile. So once you've completed your profile, completed your CV and the other fields, you can just simply click activate profile. Then you will be visible on the system and can be contacted. So I hope that's given a, a quick overview of how uh, registration takes place. Um, once you're then in the system, of course, once you're uh, on the system and you want to look at vacancies, for example, in the construction sector, you simply click on construction sector or construction portal vacancies and it will list all of the vacancies that are in the system at the moment. And do remember this is changing day to day and what you're seeing, I mean literally this top one will be the latest that has come in. So you get a complete chronological listing coming in and then on the left hand side you have the option to search in more detail. You can use keyword searching to search for a vacancy or you can pick from a particular company. If I wanted to pick Alphabeti, for example, it would show any of the um, vacancies in the system that have been put on by Alphabeti. So it enables you to define search and uh, activate it, and you can save searches as well. So if you have particular interests, either in companies or particular work opportunities, define your search on the left-hand side here. And then at the bottom of the search column, you have the option to save your search and you can build up a library of saved searches, which will um, enable, instead of going through it every time, you can simply come into your option up here for saved searches and rerun a search. Oh, there's one in there for Balfour in the East Midlands. If I just click on that, it would run that search for me. I can also set it to automatically alert me if, uh, a new vacancy comes in matching the search criteria, it will send me an email telling me that there's one in there with a link to it. Um, and so you can really shortlist and create a, a subset of vacancies you might want to look at. You can look across different um, employment types. So if you're looking for um, part-time roles or uh, contract roles, you can look across a particular salary range, although we have found generally most companies put competitive in that category. Um, you can look by location or county. You can look by the primary business activity um, in the construction job family. So you can just look against um, particular type of, of job in there. So if I uh, select one of these and then um, I put consulting engineering and click on that, it will show me um, any in the system. It's there at the moment. 
these vacancies are building every day we have um, uh, they come and go there there as you can see the date closing date is shown on each one and when you can see a vacancy in the system you simply click on it to look into the details and you get the full summary of what has been provided by the company so here is one by um, remedy geotechnics limited uh, for a senior associate geotechnical engineer it provides top level information um, where is it located what the salary is job summary qualifications experience and then the closing date for this one is 31st of august now you have options here you can choose to apply for the vacancy and that will plug you right into whatever the company has asked you to do it may be that they ask you to complete an online application form or if you haven't attached your cv they might ask you to send a full cv or you might actually get a message from them saying we've seen your details on the construction sector portal we'll be interested to talk to you please phone phone this number or send an email to this address so that they, they can talk to you directly through the system you can print the details you could forward them if you have friends or colleagues you want to you've seen a vacancy you think they might be interested in you can simply forward it to them you can put it in your favorites folder um, and if they've attached a job advert which this one has you can also click on the job advert and you'll see uh, the full information that they've they've provided so that's very much how um, the system works and we have um, a number of different options you, you have up here where you can see um, you can monitor not only your uh, favorites your save searches but expressions of interest that have been made in you so as companies see your details and express interest in you you can keep a track of what has happened there and you can also monitor and track your application activity so you can see which jobs which applicant which vacancies you've applied to and just keep um, a record of what has happened with those and then for your own profile you can change uh, you can look at your dashboard you can um, change any uh, accounts or password details you wish if you want to modify your personal profile you can do that and um, there are a number of other settings here which which you can step into and um, they're fairly self-explicit fairly uh, self-explanatory and just um, define how you want to be seen within the system but I hope that gives you a, a quick view of um, what is available although we're still very new into the system and its building we have also built facility whereby individual companies participating companies if they wish can have what we call a microsite where they can talk about themselves so if you're not sure about a company uh, if the company is registered it'll allow you to be directed to its website or if they have completed a microsite i know we have one in the moment which has been completed for balfabeti if i click on balfabeti for example it'll show you um, the message uh, they are giving out about what it's like to work at balfabeti um, the sectors they work with and these usually comprise a series of just um, brief text summaries and short videos or images in the system. So for other companies, you will see um, similar information. And here they're talking about the different sectors they, they work in, and there are probably additional uh, videos here attached um, to other areas they, they wanted to identify, shape your future and shape the answer. But it, it, it's just an in, a very useful additional facility. As time goes by, there will be a central sort of repository of information about companies or about other um, trade associations, professional engineering institutions, any of the supporting the stakeholder groups linked to construction. Uh, we'll, we will probably try and build up a, a framework of information there so that you have one place you can just quickly find out what is available. So I think I've been talking long enough um, and you, I've given a, an outline. Hannah, it's probably best that they hear your voice for a while and then we can answer any questions. 
No, that's great. And we've got quite a few questions. So thank you very much for that, Chris. I think that was a really good and it's nice to actually see it. It really brings it to life what the opportunities are. So I've got a few questions. So we'll try and go through these um, quite quickly just so that we can get through them all. So the first question, Stuart, is for, for yourself. Somebody's asking whether um, whether you're working with the unions on this so that they can signpost their members to to you know, uh, use it as well as as well as some of the other government you know partners and links you've got. So, are you working with the unions on it? So, I've not been working specifically with the unions on the talent retention scheme, but my understanding is they have been in contact with the team, and that we'll be having some discussions and some kind of um, meetings with them in the next couple of weeks. So, not I haven't formally been engaged with the trade unions now on this. Okay, but that is that's so that's something that you're looking at as you say as things speed yes. up. Yeah, yep. it gets that one. Great. All right. Um, Chris, so we've got a few questions. The first one is, does it matter what level you're at in the industry? So if you're an apprentice, you, you can presumably you can use the, the scheme still. Can you confirm that one? Absolutely. It doesn't matter what level you're at. If you're um, even coming into the industry, you, you haven't even started your, your working career, we, we will be um, providing uh, you know, opportunities as they come up on the system and whatever other level you're at whatever your function is uh, within the industry uh, just mm -hmm. register and uh, be seen yeah okay now that's great thank you um another one is do you have to have been made redundant to use it or can you use it at any point um the registration for individuals can, can be done at any point. Um, however, it's primarily being, uh, we anticipate there will be a significant number of people uh, who will either be at risk or uh, being made redundant who will come onto it. But um, technically you can, you can register on it at any point. Yeah, and there's no restrictions. It may be that you know, you're worried and you'd like to look for a new role, but you haven't yet been formally consulted. Actually, that doesn't matter. You can register anyway. That's right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Um, somebody's asked for the web address. So can we just reread that one out? And we will send it round as well. But if you could just read it out if people want to go straight on after this webinar's finished. Yes. Certainly, they're, 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 I'm sorry, it was a bit confusing at the beginning. It's because when we started, we had to very quickly move in and we have set pinked up um, a new URL for it, but either will take you to the site. So the, 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 the two are um, trs-system.co.uk forward slash construction. The alternative is CLC hyphen talent retention dot co dot uk. Okay, no, that's I'm great. Correct. You. You've made me, made me think twice in saying that, but um, <laughs> no, that's fine. And we will email them as well. We will email everybody um, who's registered, signed up for this so that they will get a copy of the link as well. So if you wanted to wait for that, then that's absolutely fine as well. Although I'm sure, I'm completely sure you got the right one there, Chris. Don't worry, don't doubt yourself. Um, right, a few more questions. Um, so somebody's asking about how you recommend people. So say you've got friends who are at risk or you know, you're aware of people who are looking for jobs. How do you put them in touch um, you know, how do you sort of flag the system to them? Is it as simple as you share the link? Um, Chris, I'm just looking at you for that one. Uh, absolutely. I think the, the easiest way is if you bring them into this um, main page, I'm not sure if I'm still, if you can still see the screen, um, just bring them to the URL, uh, the, the trs-system.co.uk forward slash construction. Um, and there is a button you can see for employers, uh, or for candidates uh, or for other there's one for partners as well participating um, organizations but if you click on the candidates one it'll tell you what the purpose of the uh, portal is for and just lead you into the registration and then you simply register and come mm -hmm. onto the system um, so that's really for anyone who's interested in construction sector opportunities or anyone who's worried about their role at the moment 
Okay, no, that's great. Thank you, Chris. Um, a question for you, Stuart, is how you mentioned a little bit in your presentation, but someone's asked about how are you working with companies that are making a lot of um, redundancies? We've seen obviously there's been quite a lot of that in the news. So how how are they being? I don't know. Are they being targeted? So where they're making significant numbers of redundancies, we're contacting them. And when I say we, it's normally either myself or a member of the TRS kind of team, so might be yourself, Hannah, or Sarah Bill, um, who's also working with us on this. So we're making contact with them and kind of discussing the scheme and kind of um, what kind of support we can provide to them and their employees. So just to give you an example, um, uh, McAlpine's have made a recent US public information they've recently made redundancy. So I've had conversations with their director of HR about how we can offer support, how they, um, we can go in and present the TRS to affected staff members and what that might look like. Cool. So what we're doing really is um, we are really kind of keep, we get daily intel here in Bays about which companies have made redundancies. And off the back of that, we then go and contact those companies and talk to their sort of senior management team about how the TRS can be used to help them specifically. That's brilliant, Stuart. And I think that's that's probably a relief for people as well that you are taking that proactive approach. That's great to hear. Thank you. Um, Chris, I've got a just a, a, a simple one. What if you don't have a CV? Does that stop you from registering or can you still, you know, complete it and search for maybe search for vacancies if that's what you're interested in? Absolutely. You can register at a very top level so you can simply apply for vacancies on the system even if you don't have your cv or profile uh, loaded up so if you want to apply for vacancies just do that first bit of the registration um, if you complete the second bit you can put profile key skills a summary for yourself as long as you put that in you and you've answered the other questions about qualifications etc you you can be seen by companies so um, it's either really just registering to use it to apply for vacancies or registering and then attaching either your CV or just filling out the fields and completing the profile and then you can be seen by other companies as well mm -hmm. if you have any queries at all just click on the contact us and we'll talk you through it and help you with it that's great. Thank you, Chris. Uh, so I've got another question. In. So can my current employer make recommendations if I've been made redundant? How does that work through the system? Um, make recommendations in terms of ref uh, with regard to your, uh, I'm not quite sure what that. Yeah, um, so maybe, maybe what just what's the role of your current to. employer? So how do they, because it does link back, doesn't it? You showed that when you register, you put your previous employer in. Yeah, um, yeah. So I guess is it is it more in the traditional sense that you do it through references, but that businesses can see your previous employer? Is that right? Yeah, I mean it. It references um, usually you indicate in your CV if your uh, you know what references you can offer, and that's just generally it's your existing or previous employer. Um, mm -hmm. There is no formal. We don't seek references from employers to to offer them forward. It's just simply putting you in touch with the contact uh, interested companies and your cv will include any reference to the references you're happy being taken up so we don't go above and beyond anything you would normally do in a normal application yourself yeah. um, and we've got a couple of questions on the the sort of scale and the scope of applicability so the first one is um chris whether it's just technical sort of frontline construction roles or can you just sort of explain a bit about the, the scope of the different types of roles on there? Yes, um, certainly it's it's any roles the companies are providing, which could be, I mean, traditionally we see roles which could be admin, um, marketing, sales, finance, engineering, technical. So it's whatever vacancies the participating companies are looking for. We don't restrict it in any way to any particular category of vacancies it, it's um, many of these organizations have multiple job functions and will be seeking people uh, at all levels as well as primarily the the sector related levels and things so um, there's no 
particular focus it has. It's any vacancies that these organisations are offering will show up on the system. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that's really important because people could quite easily assume it's just technical roles, but actually you've got admin, you've got customer care, you've got HR, is anything in a construction business, isn't it? Um, I'm just sort of follow up question. And maybe uh, this is, I don't know, Stuart, this might be one for further development. So people are asking whether they're able to see roles or apply for roles outside of the construction sector um, on the portal at this stage. I don't know, Chris, do you want to go first and then yep. Stuart? <laughs> yep. uh, Chris, can you, I'll let Chris go first on that. As part of the whole framework of the TRS programme, as, as we work across a number of different sectors, and um, the intention is that it will be possible to see um, vacancies from other sectors as well, just as you can. Um, you know, in, in, in the real world, you can apply, look at any company's website and see it. So we will be um, showing uh, vacancies from other other sectors as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, just about building what Chris has said, part of the um the kind of the the rationale for base funding the scheme was that kind of we take people from adjacent sectors as well. So it's more the kind of um the medium term approach that we'll be looking at how we link across to different sectors. So for example, aviation being one at the moment, which is taking a huge hit. So we'll be looking at that as well. Okay, great. Thank you. We're coming to the end of the questions, so you can take a breath. Um, there's one here about additional support. So what sort of additional support is there available? And I mean, I'll start with answering that because um, part of how we brought this scheme together is that we are seeking partnerships with business associations like mine and also things like professional bodies or the CITB. Um, and what we're wanting to do, and it, it's not fully functional yet, but what we're trying to do is advertise on there where there is additional support. So, for example, through ACE, we have quite a lot of guidance notes. We also have a HR helpline um, that people can call and seek advice from. So we're going to be advertising that on the portal so that, again, people can, can pick up on those. There's a very specific question about support with writing a CV. So I know some of the professional bodies do that. I know CITB will do that, particularly for their sort of apprentices and things that they're looking after. But Stuart, that might be a good time to just flag up some of the work you've been doing with DWP, because I know they're very interested in signposting some of their support as well, the Department of Work and Pensions, aren't they? Yes, yeah, so the DWP um, very more generally are very interested in kind of the construction space at the moment, so particularly um, this scheme. We are working, I've had, I've had many conversations and meetings and dialed into many presentations for them. So they're particularly working with us on kind of getting the program out to their, um, their job coaches, their rapid response teams, their frontline workers. And really kind of pushing so it's also going either gone or is going to all job centers as well so really kind of they are quite keen and they've really kind of do some really good work in this space to push the scheme out to the front lines so that people who are getting made redundant are made aware of the kind of um the offer that is there in terms of um, the um construction the, the, the talent retention scheme Okay, no, that's great. Thank you. And I so, so I think there's some of it is there already, and then there'll be some more things being added in terms of signposting yep. support. And there's a lot, like you say, that's in train with DWP because they've got a lot of government funding, a lot of people trained, haven't they, to do this sort of thing? Yes. So, but yeah, yep. the more we can get that on, the the better. Okay. Um, right. A couple of very quick questions before we close. Um, Chris, somebody's asked about how long does the registration take? Now, obviously, you took us through the forms. And you said there was a piece where you get an automated email. Is there any sort of approval process, anything that takes a bit of time, or is it really that simple? You can sort of do it um, relatively quickly. Uh, for individuals, it's very quick indeed. That first stage takes, you know, just seconds, minutes really to, to complete. And once your email has been verified, uh, then you can complete the second stage, which is all your job search preferences, your qualifications, etc., and things like that. Mm -hmm. And really within, you know, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, you could have your full, if you have a CV ready and you attach it, the, your complete registration could be done and complete. Um, with companies, we do have moderation side. There is a, a checking of participating companies that they are sector, bona fide sector companies. And um, that can sometimes take up to, you know, 24 hours and things, but not for individuals, individuals. Um, can come straight through once their email has been uh, verified. Mm -hmm. Okay, no, that's great. Um, last question, 
somebody's asked what can companies see so can they see your name and your email or can they you know is it is it in terms of data protection is it a little bit more anonymous than that they can see your profile and your skills i don't know chris if you can just last question just answer that one yeah I'll yeah, it's very good and very important that the, the system really allows you to decide to what extent you want to be visible. You, you can be uh, anonymous on the system, so no one will see your email, um, no one will see anything more than you want to put down on your profile, or if you attach a CV. A CV, we warn you when you attach CV, if you include additional information, if you put your mobile on it or you put your home email and people look at your CV, then it may well be that they contact you at that level. And uh, if you haven't sort of sanitized it in any way, just uh, we, and we alert you as you do this. Um, but in many cases, that, that's not an issue to people, uh, but the system has been set that so you can be anonymous on it um, or you can make yourself fully, fully visible. Okay. Great. No, no, that's really, like I say, really quite important. Okay, so I think we're we're out of time, but that was brilliant, really informative, lots of good engagement, lots of questions there. So thank you very much um, to both of you for taking the time to speak on it. Thank you very much to our um, audience that we've got with us today. And just to remind you that this will go up online so that you can send this webinar around. We will send you the link to that. And we will also send you the link to the Construction Talent Retention Scheme. And you can see the web address there in the bottom left hand corner as well so hopefully that gives you everything you need to get started um, so go away get yourselves registered share it with people you think are going to benefit because that's really the um, you know the huge value in it and particularly because at the moment we've got more jobs than people so we need some more people on there please um, I think that's it have a great weekend thanks again to my, my speakers today I know it's a very hot Friday but you've done a, a fantastic job taking us through that and I think really looking forward to, to seeing how this develops so take care all bye bye thanks Hannah absolutely thanks Hannah thanks Hannah thanks Stuart